Hello viewers, hope you're all doing good and I also hope you're following my channel and learning Kubernetes. Right, um, in this video I'm going to show you uh, a quick demo of how the jobs and cron jobs work uh, in Kubernetes cluster. So as usual, I'm going to bring up a, a new cluster. So uh, just bear in mind that every time I start a new video, post a new video, um, I used to bring up a new cluster just to make sure that um, I start from scratch so that new readers, new viewers uh, who are following my video um, also s start from scratch. They shouldn't be having any problems. Uh, but I'm using Vagrant to provision the, uh, uh, the cluster. Um, each time I provision, I'm not um, fixing my Kubernetes cluster to a specific version. So depending on um, when you are following this video and when you are trying out this video, you might get a different version of uh, Kubernetes. Um, so the demo that I'm showing on each of my video um, may work or may not work with future versions or some compatibility issues. So if you have any problems following my video in the future um, with a different version of Kubernetes, just uh, drop me a comment. Um, I can quickly spin up uh, the VMs and uh, check the uh, issues for you. Right, um, I'm going to cd to play directory and I'm going to git clone my GitHub repository. Um, it's all in the uh, description, the link. Just me and open source Kubernetes cd to kubernetes and then to vagrant provisioning and do vagrant up so i'm going to bring up a very new clean cluster um just going to have like three uh center seven virtual machines one uh the master node and two worker nodes so i'm going to pause the video here and i'm going to come back when it's ready All right, um, the Vagrant has provisioned all the three virtual machines. So what I'm going to do now is copy the uh, kubeconfig file from kmaster to my host machine so that I can run the kubectl command um, from my host machine uh, and get access to the cluster. I don't have to log into kmaster to run the kubectl commands. So make directory dot cube under my home directory and copy the uh, Kubernetes config file from kmaster. Okay, so that's done. Um, let me cd to the same directory above. Okay, so kubectl cluster info. Let's check the let's check the status of the cluster. Uh, the cluster is running. kubectl version. So I'm on version 113 at the time of recording this video. kubectl get nodes. So I've got a master node and a couple of worker nodes. Right, so we're all set up with a brand new cluster. Um, regarding jobs and cron jobs, they're not the same as um, the deployment set replica sets. So um, the normal use case for a cluster would be to uh, in case of Kubernetes, uh, you deploy a web application or any application that runs continuously on the cluster and if one of the part, if you uh, define uh, replicas and if one of the part goes down or if the, uh, the node that's hosting the part goes down for maintenance or crashes or anything, uh, the replica set uh, is going to make sure that uh, the part gets created and it makes sure the web, uh, the application is available, uh, high availability basically. Uh, but when it comes to jobs and cron jobs, they don't run forever uh, depending on what job you uh, schedule in the cluster, but they just run to completion. That means you run a job, it runs on the cluster and then it completes, that's it. So it's not like an Nginx um, application that continuously listens uh, in your cluster. So that's the uh, the basic difference. So let's get started. So if I go one directory above, there is a directory named YAML file and I've created a couple of YAML files for jobs and cron jobs. So cd to YAMLs and you've got the uh, cron job and job YAML. Let's take a look at the job first. vi 2-jobs job.yaml. So that's a very simple uh, YAML file. So the API version is batch. Um, we are deploying a resource of type job and I've given it a name hello world 
and that's the uh, the job template and I'm just running a busybox container and it's gonna just echo hello kubernetes that's it it's not gonna do anything much if I deploy this job into the kubernetes cluster it's gonna create a job create a pod that just echoes hello kubernetes let's see what it does on the pane above I'm gonna watch what it's doing get all okay that's a clean cluster we haven't got any pods or any resources running kubectl create minus f job dot yaml so the job has been scheduled and you can see here the job is there so we're expecting one completion one iteration of the job and the pod has also completed let's take a look at the log from the pod kubectl logs hello world there it is so hello kubernetes and if I take a look at the job kubectl describe job hello world pipe that to less it says parallelism and completion so I'll come come to that in a minute and it says when the job actually started and when it completed and how long it took pods status so one job succeeded and you can look at the events at the end successfully created the job okay so that's done and it's not gonna <coughs> the job when it's completed when it's done it's not gonna delete by itself so we need to clean up the jobs kubectl delete job hello world okay so it's all gone now let's make some tweaks to uh, the jobs right I've got some notes just to um, make sure that I've covered everything so that I don't miss anything killing part restart spot okay so let's deploy that again um, but I'm gonna edit the job file just to make sure it runs for a longer time instead of uh, echoing I'm gonna run the sleep command and make it sleep for a minute 60 seconds okay so what I'm trying to show here is um, when a job is running and if you kill the pod it's gonna run again and again uh, until it completes and exits with zero okay let's try that kubectl create minus half job so the job is created uh, the pod is getting created it's pulling the container image at the moment and it's running it's gonna sleep for like 60 seconds so what if I delete the pod now if I delete the pod you can see here the pod is terminating that's the one that I'm deleting and it launches another pod and it's running it's gonna run to completion it's gonna sleep for 60 seconds and then it will um, get terminated so that's how it is so the job runs as long as the pod uh, the job creates completes with a successful exit code okay so what is next completions and parallelism so um, the uh, YAML file we've got um, VI so at the moment it's very simple so completion so the job completes one time and then the job is done that's it and you can see it from here the job completion is one we're expecting one iteration of the job and then the job is done so what if we want to run a job uh, for say uh, five iterations or any number of iterations so that's where you need to specify under uh, the job specification so before that I'll clean up the existing job kubectl delete job hello world okay that's done under the um, job specification I'm gonna say completions to 2 so I, I expect this job to run twice so um, this is non parallel it's gonna run sequentially it's gonna create a pod um, and the container and then run the job run the pod and then once it completes it's gonna start another container another pod and then it completes so it's sequential one after the other and to make it quick I'm going to change that back to a simple echo command 
Hello Kubernetes. Okay, so we've specified the number of completions to two. Let's see what it does. kubectl create minus f job.yaml. The job is created and you can see uh, it has created the first part and it's going to run to completion and it's completed and it has created the second part. And you can see here completions two and uh, the completions is two. If you look at um, the hello world job it says parallelism is one completions two that's what we set. Uh, the last completed status duration how long it took and how many succeeded how many failed and that's the uh, the event log for the job so the first part getting created the second part getting created right let's clean up the job kubectl delete job hello world okay when it comes to parallelism you can tell how many jobs you can run in parallel I want uh, two iterations of this job and I'm gonna say parallelism is two. So uh, at the maximum it can run two jobs in parallel. So if you've got like 10 jobs and you say um, parallelism two, it's gonna run like five iterations, five uh, times. So let's see what it does. kubectl create job. The job is created and you can see both the parts have been created. So these two jobs are running in parallel. So that's basically parallelism. Let's clean it up. kubectl delete job hello world. What else I've got? Back off limit. <coughs> Excuse me. What is back off limit? Right. <coughs> For this um, I'm gonna edit the YAML file and delete these two. Um, <coughs> for example, let's make this container fail, uh, make this command fail. So, for example, if I do ls on the busybox container, ls slash venkat, uh, definitely the directory slash venkat is not in the busybox, so it's gonna exit uh, with exit status 1, which means the part failed. So the job is going to start another part. So basically, um, it's going to run the job, uh, create parts as long as it uh, passes. So unless it passes, it's going to create more parts sequentially, one after the other. Okay, let's see what it it's going to do. kubectl create job. So the job is created. <coughs> it's creating the container at the moment and it's going to fail. So that's the error you're seeing. So it failed. The exit status is 1 because it can't find uh, slash venkat. So the other one also failed <coughs> and it's creating the third container. And it goes on creating pods um, until it succeeds, until the pod exits with status 0. In our case, it's not going to complete because we are looking for slash venkat. So here where <coughs> the back of limit comes. So if I delete uh, the hello world job, it's going to keep on creating parts uh, until it succeeds. So if I edit the YAML file and say under specification back of limit, um, these are, by the way, these are case sensitive. Back of limit is two, for example. So it's going to um, once it fails for uh, two times and it won't uh, create more parts. So that's what basically we are trying to achieve. kubectl create minus f. Okay, job is created. It's gonna fail <coughs> for the first time. Yeah, it failed and the status is error. It's gonna fail again. Error and it's gonna create another one container creating error and it stops there it won't proceed further it won't create any number of parts so that's it and if I look at the uh, job now so it says one running uh, two failed uh, <coughs> so what I'm interested in seeing is why it failed 
if I go to the end to see the events um, I think I need to do it again okay cool zero running three failed and if I go to the end it says back off limit exceeded job has reached the specified back off limit so it's not gonna provision any new parts because we have specified the back off limit to two I would expect when you specify back off limit to two I would expect just the uh, two parts because it failed two times uh, but the internals of Kubernetes uh, they define it in a different way so it checks only on the third uh, iteration okay kubectl delete job hello world and one other thing finally I want to show is active deadline seconds which is you can set a threshold saying okay I know my job is going to take uh, like 20 seconds and if it runs any longer than just terminate the part there's something wrong with the uh, with the job so I don't want to um, keep the job running forever so that's what we're gonna try and do now um, let's delete the back off limit and add active deadline seconds active deadline seconds to 10 seconds and I'm going to change the command that it runs to sleep for 60 seconds so what I'm basically doing is I'm creating a container this is a job uh, that downloads the busy box and basically it sleeps for 60 seconds so that's the job and I don't want this job to run more than 10 seconds just to uh, illustrate what uh, the active deadline seconds option does kubectl create job okay so that's uh, created and the pod is getting started container is creating and running and if you see the age it's 8 seconds 10 seconds so after 10 seconds you can see the part got terminated if I look at the job description describe job hello world it says one failed and if you look at the events at the bottom it says deadline exceeded job was active longer than the specified deadline we specify the job shouldn't run for more than 10 seconds and it got terminated kubectl delete job hello world okay these are some basic examples you can go to kubernetes.io and find out what else you can do with the job I just wanted to uh, give you a head start to uh, using jobs and cron jobs now let's look at the cron jobs so I've got the cron job yaml .file. basically you want to use cron job whenever you want to schedule a job on a regular basis periodically say you want to run a job um, every day every hour or every minute okay let's look at what's in the uh, YAML file it's very similar to the job specification but uh, the extra one you've got is you've got the job template and you've got the schedule so basically it's a cron schedule if you go to if you search for cron in the wiki and you see here basically you need to have five fields for the schedule the first one is the minute at which minute at what minute you want to run the job what hour you want to run the job what day of the month what month and what day of the week it's basically five I hope you're all familiar with using uh, cron jobs in uh, the Unix Linux systems okay so basically that's it uh, the schedule we specified in this particular case we have specified that I want the job to run every single minute so you put star on all the five uh, fields and it gets run every minute what you also can do is um, you can specify for example I want to run every five minutes star slash five every five minutes or I want to run on every hour or I want to run 30 minutes past every hour and only on specific days 1 2 3 and um, 0 for Saturday through to 6 for Sunday um, or I want to run only on um, Monday and Friday all, all sorts of things or you can specify 
um, I want to run every two hours so on so let, let's keep it simple um, you can also specify at hourly or weekly and so on so for this demo let's keep it simple okay so this is a basic job um, downloading a busy box container and I'm running an echo command that's it kubectl create minus f so the job got created the cron job so you can see here cron job schedule suspend I'll come to suspend in a minute so that's the first part that got created and after about a minute it will get uh, it will create another job and the thing to notice here is <coughs> um, it's going to create a job object job resource for every single uh, schedule so every single minute it's going to create a new job and new set of pods depending on how many pods you configure in your job okay so that's running age is 29 seconds if it goes past 60 seconds uh, it's going to create another job and uh, another pod so let's wait for that uh, meanwhile we can take a look at the cron job hello world cron so it says the schedule concurrency policy I'll come to that in a minute suspend is false last scheduled time when it was scheduled last time so some of the events so it has created the part it has created the job and uh, the job completed successfully on the pane above if you see uh, so that's the second job that got created so 15 seconds so that's the second job and that's the second part that it created right so it keeps on creating the job and parts and by default it uh, by default it holds the last three jobs and it cleans up all the, uh, the old ones so all the three successful jobs if a job completed successfully it's going to keep uh, a history of uh, the last three successful jobs and if a job fails it's going to keep the last failed job so that in case if you want to um, uh, debug why the job failed it's going to keep the last failed job just one um, failed job and three last successful jobs so that's the uh, third job it created it's creating the container right okay um, kubectl delete cron job hello world cron so if you do that what you will be expecting is it's gonna delete all the jobs it created and all the parts it created but it won't be the case all the time when you delete a cron job it might leave uh, uh, some of the jobs or parts behind so you need to do that manually you need to clean up manually let's see if it cleans up everything okay so it has cleaned up everything cool um, sometimes um, when I was testing this video uh, testing this before uh, uploading this video uh, it didn't delete all the parts sometimes it leaves the parts behind so I need to manually uh, do kubectl delete parts kubectl delete parts minus minus all if you don't have any other parts if you want to delete um, all the parts right what else we could do default run uh, deleting cron jobs that's done okay successful jobs history limit and failed jobs history limit by default it's gonna have as I said it's gonna uh, retain the last three successful jobs and lost one failed job um, let's change that VI and under the uh, <coughs> cron job specification I'm gonna add successful jobs history limit if you say zero let's try that if you say zero um, haven't uh, make the part container to fail so let's go with the uh, successful job history limit or you can also add failed jobs history limit zero if you specify zero so three and one is the default three successful job and one failed job and if you 
specify Jira, it's going to clean up the job immediately. It's not going to hold any history of the jobs, but it's not going to delete the parts. It, it's going to leave the parts behind, but it will delete the uh, job history. Say if you want to retain the last 10 successful jobs, just set this parameter to 10. So for now, we can set that to zero and see what it's going to do. kubectl create. Okay, so the cron job got created. Let's wait for the first job to get scheduled. Okay, so that's the first job and the part is getting created. The job is completed and um, the job got deleted. So basically you don't get the history of the jobs. So that's what uh, the successful jobs history limit and failed jobs history limit does. Okay, let's delete that. And delete the cron job. kubectl um, see, it has deleted the job but not the part, so you have to do that manually. kubectl delete cron job. Yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. It has deleted the cron job but it didn't delete the part. So the part is still there. Let's delete it manually. kubectl delete part. Okay, part is deleted. What else I've got? Suspending the cron jobs, concurrency policy, okay. So, uh, cron job, let's run the cron job, kubectl create. So you've created a cron job on your production cluster and it's running for a while um, with the default three successful uh, job history and one failed job history and so on. Um, Say you want to diagnose a problem with your jobs and you want to suspend the job, cron jobs when cron jobs from deploying more jobs and pods while you're investing the um, investing the issue. You can suspend the cron job. Uh, bear in mind when you suspend the cron job, um, it's not going to stop any job that's already in progress or any pods that that's already been created. So it's going to prevent the cron job from scheduling any future jobs and pods. So that's completed and it's gonna um, kick off another uh, job in a minute. What we could do is um, we can edit the cron job and set under uh, cron job specification you can set suspend to, to, to true uh, suspend to true. You can do it in two ways either you can <coughs> Um, you can see the uh, status here, suspend is false and the cron job is active now. You can edit the YAML file and apply the YAML file or you could do it dynamically using the command without touching the uh, YAML file. But I would um, recommend doing it the uh, YAML file way because uh, you get the uh, revision control. Whatever you do, it gets uh, logged. Uh, for audit so you know who suspended the job and so on um, okay so uh, the cron job is active and it has created the second job and the second part and we've updated our YAML file uh, to suspend the cron job so let's apply it so you can't do kubectl create it's gonna comply saying uh, the cron job already exists so you got to do kubectl apply minus f if you apply it and immediately it says um, suspend is true and uh, you won't see any new jobs um, getting scheduled. So it has done two jobs and if you look at the status of the cron job, um, suspend is true. So it's not going to create any new jobs. And the last schedule time was at 11.40. That was this one 58 seconds ago, this job. Okay, so that's the uh, suspend. And if you want to resume it, you again have to go to cronjob.yaml, delete this line or set it to false uh, and kubectl apply. 
but I'm not going to do I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to show you the command line way to um, change the uh, fields, uh, the value of the fields, without editing the YAML file. So for that, what you have to do is we are trying to change the uh, resume the cron job. Okay, kubectl patch is the command, and the resource is cron job, and the name is hello world cron minus p parameter. It's just a dictionary, uh, a YAML notation. So, under specification, uh, the parameter we are going to set is suspend, and the value is set to false. And if I do that, it's going to patch the resource, cron job resource. Okay, that's patched, and you will see the suspend is false, and it's going to create another container and another job this job so that's how you suspend and resume your cron jobs let's delete it kubectl delete cron job job deleted and this time it has deleted all the resources sometimes it doesn't delete the parts and sometimes it does uh, but I'm not sure under what circumstances it does that okay so concurrency if I edit the YAML file, <laughs> concurrency policy, you can have one of three values. It can take three values, either allow, which is the default. You can forbid or you can uh, replace. So allow, forbid, replace those are the three values um, you can apply to concurrency policy field uh, the default is allow so which means concurrency as you know um, in this cron job when a job misses its schedule for some reason uh, it's going to create another job and uh, do you want a job to run when there is a job already in progress so that's concurrency uh, by default it's allow so you can have um, any number of jobs uh, running at the same time so you need to be careful about your job if your job can't manage that so that's item potency so if a job fails um, if a job has done like part of the work you've uh, defined and it fails for some reason it's gonna start another job and it's gonna run so you need to make sure your code copes with that one and concurrency is you can have uh, more than one job running at the same time so if your job uh, can't cope with that you can set that to far bid which means uh, if there is a job already running don't schedule new jobs so wait for the job to complete and then schedule a new job or you can set it to replace which means if there is a job already running and there is an another job in the queue uh, to be scheduled uh, for whatever reason the previous job took long time say for example in our case we we're running a job every minute uh, for example if the job we started uh, first uh, is taking more than a minute and the second job kicks in after a minute um, it's gonna replace the existing job it's gonna terminate the part um, the job and then it's gonna uh, start the new job so that's replace Um, I've covered item potency and use cases. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to show you in jobs and cron jobs. Um, the example I showed you in this video is just very simple. It's not a very useful uh, thing to share, but uh, for demonstration purpose, I wanted to do something quick, so I picked up these echo and sleep uh, jobs. So in actual scenario, in, in real world use cases would be like you want to do a MySQL uh, backup periodically or just a one-time job you've got a MySQL database um, inside the cluster or anywhere in the world uh, and you want to do a periodic MySQL backup say you want to backup MySQL uh, database uh, midnight um, every day or weekly backups and so on or you just want to do a one-shot uh, MySQL backup you can do that using jobs and cron jobs um, you can uh, the other use case would be to do any regular 
backups or if you want to send um, uh, emails to anyone um, or you can do a source code checkout say for example I want to check out my git code and it's an active uh, git uh, repository and I want to check out uh, the git repository every hour um, or every every day or so so those would be the real world use cases um, yeah okay cool so I think you've learned something new in the Kubernetes series if something is not working right for you following my video um, I guess it would be the different Kubernetes uh, cluster version uh, this is the um, fastest growing open source project at the moment so um, when you're following this video after maybe later in the future uh, a year ago after two years um, they might have changed the uh, options or anything and it might not work the same way as it used to work uh, or in this case in my video so if something is not working just uh, drop me a comment I should be able to um, check out and respond to your questions right um, if you like the video please um, click the like button and uh, you can share it with your friends and if you have not subscribed to my channel already please subscribe to my channel and there are more videos I've planned uh, for Kubernetes there are lots to cover in Kubernetes so I hope uh, you really enjoyed uh, watching this video and uh, thanks for your time today watching this video and I'll see you all in my next video bye bye